Hello, are you guys looking to add page builder fields to your BigCommerce theme or get your first page builder fields added to your theme? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Before we get started, my name is Cal. I am a developer, a store owner just like you, and I run a, a private community for e-commerce store owners called e-commerce growth. I'll have a link at the end of the video. If you're interested, it's free. And you know, every week I post more videos about e-commerce to this channel on YouTube. And so if you find this one helpful, subscribe and hit the bell and you can see more as I come out with more. All right, let me share my screen and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So here's the theme that we're working on. It's just a, a Roots original theme. And if I look at the front end, <coughs> this is how it looks. So it's a very simple site right now. Um, let me close this out. And if I go into the customizer, let me show you how they look. When you open the customizer, it's on the design tab by default. Switching to the preview tab uh, hides, hides the view of the widgets. So you want to stay on the design tab. And there's two different ways that widgets are going to show up here in the customizer. There are blue regions here. Um, these are your regular regions, if you will, or non-global regions. And then there are these purple regions, which are listed as global regions. So I want to talk about the difference, and I'm going to show you how to add more to your theme so you can put them wherever you want. These can be put wherever you want in BigCommerce. So you're not limited by the place that they are in your current theme or if your theme doesn't have them at all. As long as you're on Stencil, you can add them to pretty much anywhere on your site. So you can get really creative with them. Now I'm going to show you guys for the purposes of this video how to edit, uh, how to add one here below the newsletter sign up, how to add one here at the top of my footer bar, and um, maybe how to add one in here and why you would want to do that. So let me show you how to do it. And then we'll talk about you know how how it's useful, I guess, or how how to, best practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's go to storefront, my themes, and here's what you need to know. We need to edit the theme files, but if you're running an original theme, an uncustomized theme, then there's no option to edit theme files. So what you have to do first is you have to say make a copy. So we're just going to call this roots copy. And then when this is done processing, we're going to apply it. So instead of instead of running the original theme, the untouched theme, we're going to switch to be running this copy, which is an exact copy of the theme that was there because we're making a copy of it right now. All right, so let's see here. Processing theme, this does take just a minute or two here. All right. So now we have roots copy. Let's go ahead and click the ellipses and choose apply. And we're going to apply the original version. If you're running cornerstone, you probably want to apply cornerstone light. And um, all right, so now we're running roots copy original and we can click advanced. And now we have the option to edit theme files. All right, so once we get into the stencil file editor, it puts us on home.html right off the bat because it knows this is where most people are editing their theme most of the time so if the place that you're looking for is on the home.html the place where you you want to install a page builder region you're already right here now in, in this situation i said i was going to install this under the newsletter sign up and if i scroll all the way down to the bottom of this theme file then you can see that there's like recent posts and then there's a region and then there's no newsletter sign up here on the home and it just that's because on this particular theme uh, unlike some it's putting the newsletter sign up into their actual footer so this is all considered part of the footer so if you were adding a, a region elsewhere on the home page you could add it right here and it's just a matter of figuring out which line you should insert it to but in this case I'm going to open up templates components common and footer.html to open my footer file. Now, if you were trying to add it to the header file, this would be the header.html is probably the you know the other place you're most likely to be trying to add um, a, a page builder region to. So opening the footer.html, you can see that we have this banners function, and then we have 
the newsletter box right here. So that is identifying the correct place that we wanted to put this new page builder field in, which I said was underneath the newsletter and above the footer. Uh, although it's technically part of the footer, it's above the visual footer, if you will. All right. So here's what we do. We're going to make a new line where this is going, and we're going to we're going to put this in here. I'm just going to paste it so I get the syntax right, and we're going to have it look like this. So here's what a normal region looks like: is we have three curly brackets to open it, we have three curly brackets to close it, and then we have region space name equals and then some quotation marks with a name inside it. So it has to have the three curly brackets. It has to have region and name separated with a space and all lowercase. It's got to have the equal. It's got to have the quotation marks. What it doesn't have to have is this thing that says header bottom that I pasted in. We can call the region whatever you like. We could, we could literally call it whatever you like. And it doesn't matter. You do want to separate words with underlines, typically. Um, you can't have spaces in here because that'll definitely wreck some things. But let's put in, we're going to put in two regions. We're going to put in one that is the whatever you like region, and then we're going to put in another one where, where we are just going to add this flag at the end of the name. So the way this looks like is you put hyphen, hyphen, or dash, dash, and then global, all in lowercase. So whatever you like dash dash global and if I click save and apply this will take a minute you guys can sing a song or something while you're waiting Sensil file editor does take a minute I could I could cut this out but I I kind of want you guys to see that it does take a minute so if you're sitting there waiting for it to apply on your side you're gonna see the same thing that I'm seeing which is it takes about you know 30 well 30 seconds i guess a minute is longer than it's supposed to take but 30 seconds all right so it's saved now if we come back to the front end we don't see anything different yet and it's because we added those regions but we didn't put any actual um, content into them so let's go into let me close that out and we're going to go into the customizer from the back end we go to storefront my themes and then just click customize on your active theme and this will take 10 seconds to open and if we scroll down now now you can see that we we added two more regions so we have an additional regular region or a blue one and we have a global region which is purple and if we drag something in here we can say this is in a region. I just, I just, uh, sorry, I quickly just dragged this text field into here. And I'm going to drag another text field into the global region. I want to say, I'm going to just change the text in here to say this is a global, global region. And I'm going to click publish. So that's updated. It says changes have been successfully published. And if we go back to the front end, now this does sometimes take half a minute to a minute to apply it on the front end, even after the customizer says it's been applied. So if you don't see what you put in here right off the bat when you refresh, then maybe give it a minute and give it another refresh. All right, so at the bottom of the home page here, we see the content that we put into the regular region and we see the content that we put into the global region. But if we go into like a category, for example, although both of those regions are present, only the content from the global region is showing up. And just to confirm that in the back end, if I click in here to the apparel category, click back to the design tab so I can see the regions, then I can scroll down and you can see, yeah, the region's still there, but there's no content in it. And it's because the difference between a regular region and a global region is that the content that you put in it is either the same everywhere that region name appears or it's different. So by putting this in a regular region, it means that that region is available wherever it's in the template, but that the content I put into it is only going to show up on that one URL. So let's just talk for a minute here about um, why that would be useful. Let's say you go into a product page. And 
let's say you have a message here that you want to put on here saying that this particular item is back ordered, right? This is, uh, or let's say, uh, two week lead time on this product, right? Um, so that would be something that you obviously don't want to say that on every single product, but you would want to be able to say that on the individual product. Now, another message that you would want to show on every product would be maybe adding a region underneath your add to cart where you could put like a trust seal or, you know, 100% satisfaction guaranteed or something like that. That's going to increase, um, you know, increase conversions, you know, decrease buyer resistance. You would want that to show everywhere. Uh, on every product page, right? So if you put a global region into something like this that's underneath the add to cart, it's going to show up not really on every page of the site, but every page where that region is present. So that would be all of your product pages, for example. Whereas this, um, this region that we put down here, which is actually available on every template on the site because it's part of the footer, you can see this is still showing up here on the uh, product page. You know, and if we change this while we're looking at the product page, then you will see when this is finished updating that it changed on the home page too. Still saving. It's thinking. All right, so let's click over to the home page. And you can see it added those exclamation marks right there. So, you know, I wanted to showcase that to really have you guys understand the difference between global and not global. Because global doesn't necessarily mean that it appears everywhere. It means it appears everywhere that region is. So if you add a region to some place that truly exists on every page, like the header or footer, then it effectively is on every page. Whereas if you apply it for, you know, into the guts of a page that is only within certain templates, like your product view section on your product, then it's only going to show up on those pages because that's the only place that those regions exist. Let me show you a couple more things here. And then I want to, uh, I want to show you something that is going to make all of your page builder fields better. So I told you, I would also show you a region here at the top of the footer inside it. So I'm going to do that by going uh, to the very top here of the footer and just creating a new line and putting a region in here. I do need to create it with a different name though, because you can't have two regions be the same name. So I'm going to call this footer underline top. So you always want to use underlines within the name. You always want to use dashes to put in the global flag if you're going to make it global. And I do want this one to be global because this is again going to be in the footer and I want this region everywhere. And I'm going to make one more here. If I scroll down here, you can see we got articles and uh, this one right here where my categories are showing. I'm going to put a new region in here called footer categories. And I'm going to just comment out the category listing that's in there automatically, which is dynamically showing. So like in the footer right now, this shows an exact category uh, structure that matches what I have in the header dynamically. But let's say we want to manually put the categories that we want there, right? Well, that would be a good opportunity to use a region. So I just added a region there and I added one at the top of the visual footer. So I'm going to click apply. And then I'll show you why I wanted to show you guys that. Give this just a minute to apply. This takes frustratingly long every single time. It's just, it's just how long it takes. All right, so I'm going to come back here to the customizer where I was, and I'm going to just click refresh so I can see those new page builder regions. And I'm showing you this as an extra step, even though I've already showed you how to add regions, but because I just want to help you guys, you know, start to visualize how these are important to you. So looking at the footer now, you can see that I've added two different regions and my category menu items here disappeared because I commented those out. So I have the two new regions and I got rid of 
my categories that were shown down there. So I could drag a text region down here and let's say, let's, let's put a promotional message here and say, save 5% in checkout with the code save, right? And we can change the text color to be white and maybe decrease the font size a little bit. We can bold it if you want. And just to make sure that it looks good, I'm going to add a little bit of bottom margin to kind of separate it from the stuff below. And that looks pretty good. That's a good way to get an extra message in there. Now, I want to show you guys how to replace the categories. And I'm going to show you two different ways. First of all, we can come back here to the page builder and drag an HTML field in here. And I could you know, manually create unordered list items here and style them. Just like that. Let me just put in a couple. Click Save. And you can see that they all showed up here. So this is a good way to make it so that you guys could fairly easily and dynamically update your links here in the footer. And you could do this with all the columns. This column, this column, this column. You could really make your whole footer be page builder content if you want, which is really easy to edit on an ongoing basis. Now you may find this to be you know difficult coding wise or you may not, but let me show you a different way to do it nonetheless, which is um, Big Commerce packages their page builder with 12 widgets uh, at the time of this recording. And you know they they are what they are. I think that I feel like they're missing some things specifically um, like responsive controls. So like in this text widget that we dropped in here, we set it to 22 pixels, but maybe you want to make it smaller on mobile so it doesn't look overly large. Maybe you want to make it like 18 pixels on mobile instead of 12 or instead of 22. Um, they don't give you a way to do that. So I think these widgets are good, but they're a little bit simpler, which is why my company put together an app called Epic Page Builder Widgets. And you can get it. Um, more than half of the widgets at the time of this recording are free within this app. And uh, let me click publish and I'll show you what it looks like once you install it. Obviously, you just go to the App Store and you install it um, like you would any other app. And once you get it installed, it'll show up here in your apps folder. And it'll say Epic Page Builder Widget App. And you can come in here and turn on whichever widgets that you want. These are the ones that are paid to upgrade currently. But you can see there's a whole bunch of them in here. And I don't even have the paid one installed in the store, but I want to show you one of them if I go back into the customizer <laughs> one of them is called custom menu so if I scroll down here I could drag custom menu in here and now it gives me this nice little thing where I can add links like this and you can change the title of each link right so link five and where it goes and you can make it open in a new tab which is nice and then you can click these three dots up here to go to settings and let's just make them white let's make them let's make them like gray on hover you can change the alignment you can change the spacing right so let's do five Let's make it a little bit smaller, make it 16. But you can see here that we can change the size of these on, on mobile and tablet, which is really nice. I'm going to unbold this. And now it really looks a lot like what we had here, you know, for our other columns. And so you can use this uh, custom menu function to put out all of your menus like that. And there's a lot of other widgets you know, you saw that come with this, you know, one of the mo one of the most popular ones is the accordion, which is um, you got to pay to get that one. But this hero masthead is really nice because it creates a thing that looks like let me drag it in there, it creates a thing like this that looks great on the top of your category pages or whatever, adds a background image, lets you put a title and whatnot in here. And this is fully customizable as well. And um, 
Another one that's really popular, just, you know, and again, these are just in the free ones, is an alternating widget, an alternating banner here, where you can put one in here. Let's just duplicate this. And then we can come in here to image settings and say right align the second one. And look at how much, look at how much goodness we put on the page in just that little amount of time. So once you get the regions in here, you can see there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. I, you know, we have more widgets coming out. We've added a ton of widgets to what you can do with BigCommerce. But even if you never get our app, there's a lot that you can do just with their text widget, just with their custom HTML widget. And, um, you know, if you have trouble getting more regions on your page, consider reaching out to somebody like us. Uh, we can easily do it for you. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this gets your mind running on what you can do with page builder regions. And, you know, if you found this helpful, click the like button and be sure to check out our community of store owners, uh, which is right up here, joinecommercegrowth.com. It's a free community. And if you need help with your store, hit us up at epicdesignlabs.com. And keep in mind, I am putting these videos out every week. So if you're stuck on something, leave me a comment on one of our videos and maybe that'll be what I talk about next week. I appreciate your time, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.